Kaiju Number no. 8 is a series that without even an anime adaptation even revealed has achieved 10 million copies circulated which is something that you do not see very often. So I had an epiphany and wondered how would Kaiju Number no. 8 be able to fare against the likes of Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen and even Demon Slayer once its anime comes out in 2024. To answer that question, I am not alone today, I am have a, sp a very special guest with me if you mind introducing yourself. Um, hey I'm Ayo Iri, I just want to say thank you for having me on the channel yeah uh, no worries man um so let's start off with um how would the first season would look like uh, as far as the chapter length so 30 chapters i feel like would be the ideal 30 to 35 chapters would be the ideal length as we already know that the series is uh bi-weekly and it takes a long time for chapters to stack up so I feel like um, one season where it has 30 chapters, which as of the moment of this recording is pretty much half of what we have almost. So I feel like that would be the ideal length for that. I agree with you. So I think about 30 to 35 chapters would be perfect for the first season. That could probably be about 12 episodes and they can adapt all the way up to the Tachikawa base raid arc which in my opinion is still the best arc in Kaiju number eight to this day. Yeah, I, I very much feel you on that. Um, so so to get more into in the specifics, let's start off with the beginning with possibly one of the things that will set the anime apart pretty much from episode one, and that is the main character of the story, uh, Kafka Hibino. And it is a very interesting case um, that we have a protagonist of a shonen manga where he is about 30 years old yet he has this personality of what feels like a teenager at times and yet is able to feel so relatable across the board it is extremely interesting how um as far as the story between him and his goal of trying to get uh, to be with mina and for him to try to achieve to be in the defense force is something that generally uh, feels relatable to so many people whereas people have this mindset of one uh they maybe are too old enough and you know they just give up on their dreams so it's extremely interesting and i feel like people can immediately um connect with that on an emotional level yeah i agree with you on that and when i was first reading kaiju number eight when i was first reading kaiju number eight about two years ago just seeing kafka a 32 year old man trying to you know get back into the flow of things join the defense force and just seeing how he has this goal that differs so much from all these other protagonists within the shonen genre. For example, somebody like, let's just say, Boruto, right? That's a teenager right there. And like, shonen's been centered around teenage boys. They've always, you know, focused on teenagers mainly with their protagonist and just like that whole little age group with Kafka. He's a breath of fresh air. Things are a bit more refreshing, Kafka. It's a lot more relatable to people from all ages, I feel like, because like you said, he has that teenage kind of personality. But then with him being a bit older, it allows for people a bit up there in age to really connect with them on a personal level. And his goals are far much different from what we normally see, right? It's not like I want to be the number one um, Hokage or like the... It's not like I want to be Hokage or I want to be the number one hero with Kafka. Like you said, it's simply being alongside Mina Ashiro that makes him stand out. We don't really see too many shonen protagonists with this kind of goal, like how Kafka has. Yeah, and with that, then we have the then also the fact that he becomes Kaiju number eight and seeing how he tries to um, he kind of internalizes this. We have this conflict with him. Whereas he is trying to join the defense force, was also him being the enemy that they're striving to, um, um, the, the enemy that they're trying to target. So it's pretty much is going to bring this some sort of dichotomy between um, him trying to be um, the best soldier, as well as him trying to cover his own identity. And it's going to pretty much be an interesting. Well, it's not the most original concept. Um, that's ever been done it is still very interesting to see it into practice and with the personality between Kafka Hibino and Leno Ichikawa um, it pretty much it might connect with anime only on a 
on a very much interesting level, that's for sure. Yeah, I agree. Kafka and Ichikawa's dynamic, it just feels like that little sibling kind of relationship between them, right? And I like how Leno's just constantly, you know, just trying to better himself as an individual, as a soldier, just so he can help Kafka and prevent him from revealing this identity that he has. Because before he joins the Defense Force, Kafka is just only really known as Kaiju Number no. 8 by Ichikawa. He's the only one that really knows that Kafka possesses the powers of a monster. And he kind of takes it upon himself like, oh, it's my responsibility to make sure he doesn't, you know, push past his limits, that he doesn't use his kaiju abilities and get, his, and get himself in some trouble with the defense force. And I really like the relationship with Kafka being a kaiju and him wanting to be a defense force soldier. It creates a lot of conflict, like you said, and it makes for a lot of interesting moments nonetheless throughout the story. And like you said, the whole little idea of this, the whole little concept, it's definitely not original. We've seen it within other stories. And I do feel like this being generic doesn't really take away from the enjoyment of the story in the slightest. Yeah, um, I've and, and that's the thing, because I'm pretty sure that's going to be one of the main criticisms that's going to be lead by, for example, with Black Clover, it, you know, stealing practically every single thing from every other shonen, apparently. It will not but and that's it and that could even be a topic on its own how um just because a series takes imp inspiration from others doesn't necessarily make it bad um but yeah i feel like uh kaiju number eight stands out um pretty much on its own to the point where just because it takes its pressure doesn't necessarily mean that um all of it's all of the things that it does well are sort of suddenly overwritten and trying to a bit um, move on a bit from that then we have um kikuro shinomiya which i feel like um, apart from this whole <laughs> uh, people who like to waifu characters up, I feel like she's going to be a character, a uh, female character that um, is going to be very, very interesting. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, most definitely her. See, I like how Naoya Matsumoto handles Shinomiya's character, how he handles her right from chapter three all the way to chapter 82. And I don't know, earlier on in the story, I just had a feeling she was going to be important, not only because she's our, I guess, tritagonist, you can say, of the story, but I just had a feeling from very early on, us being introduced to, you know, the Shinomiya family, it just made it quite clear that Shinomiya is going to be very important throughout the whole entirety of the story. And the way Shinomiya is handled, it's just great. And I like that nowadays with these shonen mangeka that they're not so quick to put a female character out there and just have them look pretty. They don't just, you know, stand there, do nothing, get saved, and repeat the process. Process isn't repeating constantly. It's a bit different, right? So with Shinomiya, she's strong. We see her able to, I guess, empathize for others, right? She cares about her comrades. When you're first introduced to Shinomiya, I'm not gonna lie, she's a bit irritating and like it sounds kind yeah. of fucked up, but but um when when uh, Monster Nine did you know a little something to her in the first couple chapters, I was kind of happy because I was like, hey, this annoying you know this annoying you know <laughs> character is out the way. But yeah, I grew to like Shinomiya. <laughs> I grew to like Shinomiya over time, and especially during the first mission arc, after she was I guess saved by Kafka. Shinomiya is definitely one of the best females in shonen right now as a character her just wanting to be this person that makes her father proud and she's had all this responsibility put on her from such a young age she's a prodigy per se and it's a lot to handle how old is she like 16 17 maybe 18 it's yeah. a lot for a teenager to really you know bear so it's a lot of weight on her shoulders and i think she handles it quite well for the most part Sure, she may act a certain way, but I feel like if you were in that situation as well, you'd kind of be the same way in a sense. Yeah, it's a I lot of exactly. It's a lot of weight to bear. And her father being the, I guess, her dad being the head of the defense force and being so well known throughout Japan, just the nation as a whole and being well respected by the public. There's a lot of expectations that's put on her and we see within, you know, once we get a bit of backstory on her that she never really got praised or rewarded as a child. It was always, you're my daughter, that's to be expected. And I feel like as the story progresses, right? Naoya just does so, he just does such a phenomenal job with 
allowing Shinomiya to develop and allowing you to, I guess, get a bit more of her dad's perspective and see him kind of change as well. Yeah, and then there's also uh, Mina, who's of course uh, the one who Kafka Hibino is pretty much striving for. And I feel like uh, it, she, as far as for even until now in the story, we still would uh, don't have as much information on Mina as far as like the actual struggles that she had to face per se. But I feel like the story does um, leave that gate open for for more growth on her on her end as well. So that's yeah. something that anime only will 100% be uh, uh, looking for. Yeah, most definitely. Even to like chapter 82 right now, where we are right now in the manga, she still lacks a bit of depth. And I feel that she don't meet, I'm not she don't meet, I feel that Mina Ashiro, she's really just used to bring hype to the readers. Like every time she's on screen, you can't help but just get hyped. Rather yes. she's, you know, just simply on screen, just like doing anything. Or like she's taking down a massive kaiju. Just having Mina on screen kind of gives me like, I, I don't know. Because like when you're first introduced to her, right? You kind of see her as the strongest until, you know, we get a bit deeper into the story. But since, let's just say, I think a good point for the anime is about 30 something chapters. And I think before we really get introduced to our actual strongest character in the story, the anime only are really just going to see her as the strongest character in the verse at that point and they're just gonna get hyped every time she's on screen not only is she kafka's i guess person that he's working towards being with i guess but she also i don't know she has this like little thing about her that just makes her so she has this like like little charm about her that makes her just you know so easy to like as a character i guess you yes. can say she's very charismatic as a character yeah she has that and boss get, energy <laughs> yeah most definitely most definitely and I really like how with these female characters in Kaiju number eight, they're all just, you know, very independent and strong. They all have their own little unique and distinct personalities. Mina does lack as a character compared to like the other two characters that we have, that we have information on like Shinomiya, Rain Shinonome. I feel that she lacks compared to them, but Naoya, he's definitely gonna, you know, pay a bit more focus to Mina. Yeah, and, and good point for bringing up about the length of the chapters again so because then that is the biggest i feel like uh factor for this season and that is where will the season end specifically and i feel like kafka um getting captured would be somewhat of a great cliffhanger as then the enemy only will have absolutely no idea how will the story move on forward what will be the ramifications of Kafka, Kafka uh, exposing himself quite literally to save everyone and how conflicting it will be for everyone in the squad as well as the defense force and also Mina so there's many layers to this that I feel like if done well will definitely bring intrigue to the series as a whole oh yeah most definitely and right there so pretty much going into the monster weapon arc I feel like is the perfect point to end the story and with Mina finding out that, you know, Kafka is a monster, it just, it's just perfect. I feel like it's a perfect ending for season one of Kaiju number eight. And I feel like if you're to go beyond it, I feel like Studio Kara and Production IG are just going to find themselves in a bit of trouble because we have the events that are going on right now in the manga. And I don't know, maybe they can adapt 82 chapters into the anime. I don't think that's, you know, what you would want. Kaiju yeah. number eight is already too fast paced to begin with. So you kind of have to go with like the little 12 episode kind of kind of thing. Kind of like Chainsaw Man, they're both very fast. Kaiju number eight really isn't as chaotic as Chainsaw Man. Yeah, absolutely. But, but when we're talking about pacing, it's a bit too fast. But it also has, it's fast, but then at the same time, it's not too slow. It kind of has that little perfect pacing in a sense it has balance it's, exactly it's not too fast it's not too slow but 12 episodes can definitely do the story justice and it can do a lot for the story and just the anime as a whole it can bring in a lot of lucrative income for the studio we can get another season and etc yeah well i'm pretty sure we hit all the uh, notes for this i feel like this is um Possibly, for the most part, what Kaiju number 8 
is or season one is going to be like in the reception of it um again thank you very much ayo for being here man i truly do appreciate it yeah no problem so hope you guys enjoyed this video have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you are and see you guys in the next one